we go out for lineup, like the doors open and you go in line and then you walk. Mm -hmm. This guy's in the cell behind me. So he gets up, he gets out, we get out, and I look and he ain't there. And I was like, fucking so pissed. And all of a sudden he comes out. Dude, I turn around and I grab this motherfucker and I'm just like, boom, against the walls. Boom, boom. I pick him up. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, dude, I was literally trying to fucking end his life, right. bro. I mean, if you're going to get physical, okay. just fucking go all the way, bro. Did that buy any more time in there? No. Okay. It didn't. It didn't. I got locked down for quite a bit of time. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, otherwise motherfuckers would be in jail for the rest of their yeah. life. Yeah. Because you're squabbing in jail. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. You know? But, uh, but I understand that's a mentality that you have to have. You got to fucking just put it all on yeah. the fucking line. That's right. And that's what it's about. You know, for me and him to be world champions and to do what we did, to break the records we did, to put our bodies through what we did, you got to be willing to die. Period. Would you agree? I agree, Mr. Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. I mean, that, that's, how, that's how far you got to take it if you want to be the best. Period. If you want to half-ass it and put 50% in, then that's what you're going to be. But you and I, you know, we put 110% in. Our whole fucking existence. Yeah. Everything about us was about this, and that's it, and that's how it has to be, yeah. you know. So, um, let's talk about um, your health. Okay. You, you had a heart attack? Uh, no, I had. Uh, went into AFib. I was okay. walking around at three fifty-five. You know, my my, that's, I'm comfortable there. Uh, one morning, I got up and I took four scoops of Folgers coffee, threw it in the in the coffee pot, put one cup of water in there. And it made like Texas tea, dude. It was, yeah. and I drank that, and um, it was uh, snowing out. So you know, I went outside, and I was going to shovel snow, and I took one shovel of snow and threw it over, and I was like, <sighs> like what the fuck? I fucking couldn't breathe. So yeah. I came to the house, sat down, and it kind of felt like I had a little blood sugar. Yeah. So I decided uh, maybe I need some yogurt or something. So I asked my girlfriend was got at a gymnastics tournament that weekend. I was home alone, and I got up to walk to the kitchen. I made it to the entryway of the kitchen, and everything went black, and I went down to my knees. And uh, blew it off. Uh, next day, she had come home, and I mentioned what happened. And she goes, "You're going to the e or the urgent care." I go, "No, no, let's go. Let's go to Chipotle. And let's get some food." Yeah. No, you're going. So I go over there, and I'm like, "Just you know, let's, let's go eat." Yeah. You know, yeah. And then they come in, and they put that uh, heart checker on me or whatever, and they next thing you know, she's calling nine one one, fire trucks, ambulances are showing up, and they're wanting to haul me off to the to the hospital because I they say if I drive or walk, I could drop and die, and it's serious, and right. then, it, then it hit. Wow. Yeah, and um, that was 2015, and uh, after that happened, it was kind of a wake-up call. You yeah. Know? So I, I, I walked out of what, the, what did they do to you in the hospital? Cardiovert. So basically, they gave me a, a Michael Jackson cocktail, propanol, right. whatever that was, and some other sedative, and uh, I had an IV in. They rolled me in on this gurney, and they're like, this guy that came over, and he started sticking the IV. He goes, he goes do you like cocktails? I love cock. <laughs> That's all I remember. Hey, hey, you heard it on the hey, podium. Ryan oh, likes cock. I like <laughs> Fuck, dude. I was embarrassed to say He's that. a cock lover. When he shoved that shit in my, my IV, I went out. Oh, dude, yeah, that then, shit puts you down like a brick. Then I guess they uh, they, bolt, they bolt you down, and it's not your usual um, uh, defibrillator pants. Right. They fucking jack you, and your body wants to come off like four no, times. you jump. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, and they hit me, brought me out, and I was like, whoa, can I get some more of that stuff? And I was like, good mood. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? The, it was just the beginning of a healthy lifestyle change. Sure. And sure. I came home, and I was like, okay, I can't do this. I got to eat four meals a day. Okay, right. so I'm eating four meals, 350 down to 330, and then it, it won't go anywhere. I'm right. like, fuck, I'm eating chicken salads, four meals a day. I'm stuck you wanna, in You want to get plug in the guy that helped you out? Yeah, Roger Baker, uh, Rab Fitness, Kenwick, Washington. You know, he was the um, Emerald Cup champion in, in 2008, I believe, and... Uh, I came to him and I said, Roger, I gotta, I gotta lose weight, man. I'm, I'm, I don't want this happening again. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember he wrote me a, a meal plan. And I said, he sat down with me. He goes, What foods do you like? Well, I like Lenny and, Larry, and Larry's cookies. I like reduced fat gif. <laughs> and, uh, so he incorporated that into my diet. And he hands me this this two week diet plan. And I'm looking like one, two, three, four, five, six times I gotta eat. Yeah. Like uh, this ain't gonna work. And I threw the paper on the the uh, counter. <laughs> went a whole week, and, and my girlfriend says, You're not gonna do it, are you? Right. And I, I'm like, there's no way. I'm eating four meals. If I eat six meals, I'm not going to lose weight. Right. So I went to Walmart, put all the shit in the cart, and I went from 330 to 305. I, well, long story short, 330 to 275 in 10 weeks. 
Yeah, with, I, you know, it's speeding up the metabolism, lowering the calories. Uh, I wanted to maintain muscle. You know, hey, I, but I, I'll tell you what. When you were about two ninety five, that picture that I put up for yep. our podcast, yep. dude, that is the gnarliest I ever seen you look. Dude. You look I was, ridiculous. I, I was not strong, dude. It doesn't matter. Let's just look strong. at the picture. Yeah, you look like a fucking yeah. battle warrior, yeah. bro. Yeah, I got. I, I was. I saw that picture of you, and I was like, dude, I have it on my phone, bro. I yeah. kept it. I'm, I'm depressed. I I'm love. not stalking okay, you. Right. I do love you. I love you too. All right. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so that was a game changer. And now, you know, my body, it just, I mean, I got to watch what I eat. I got to control my calories because my body just wants to go back to three, 333. Three, it just wants to go. Yeah. And I have to fight it every day. And Rick, help Gabby do her thing. Um, so yeah, man, that's that's fucking something else. So and it's funny you get these wake up calls yeah. in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know sometimes we need those to make yeah. changes. Yeah, you know it's like oh, it ain't gonna happen to me. It's gonna happen to that guy. You know, and uh, and other things I've learned along the way is uh, you know being on TRT replacement. You yeah. know. Uh, and understanding how testosterone and other hormones um, increase the uh, red blood cell count and uh, sure. thickens our blood. I, if I would have known that, are you real, getting blood pulled? Yeah, I do my own bloodletting. Yeah, yeah, I got my own IV set. 16, really? 16 gauge needle. Yeah, it's like a fucking. Oh, dude, I know. I get I get a pint pulled every other month, bro. Yeah, three times a year, and I, I hit myself, and uh, I've got it down. My sister's a full bottomist, so I just watched how she did it, and I just find a nice vein. And well, you might have one or two of them laying around there. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I do that, and uh, you know, just I, I want to, you know, I want to live. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, if I, hey, dude, if I, I'll tell you what, you get that blood that blood pulled, you yeah, feel, feel awesome. better. Yeah, I, it's, I know. It's crazy. I know when I start getting winded on speed bench and doing fast repetitions, short rest periods, that um, it's time. Yeah. And then I go when I do that, I feel awesome, and I pull. Right. I pull seven hundred fifty ml out every time, and yeah. uh, I've got it down, man. And I, I'm a I'm a weirdo vampire guy, and I store the blood in a cupboard and I worship it and shit. That's cool. Yeah, it's weird. Hey, don't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, my Gatorade bottles with uh, blood in them. It's weird, but that's me. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about like the way we grew up and everything. My mom died about a month ago. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. No, no, no. I love her. She's a great lady. Um, but you know, she always told me, and I'm sure you've heard this. There's always going to be somebody stronger, yeah, and faster and smarter, and you know, you're always just going to have to deal with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I, I love the fact that we have come to where we have come to where it's like. And it's no disrespect to our moms, but it's like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> I did it my way, yeah. and it worked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something about that that it's a, it's a success. Like when you look at yourself in the morning in the mirror, dude, there's nothing. And I tell everybody, I go, dude, you know, and I don't want to die tomorrow. No. But if I died tomorrow. You have no regrets. Not one. Yeah. I have no regrets. I feel successful. You know, I would miss my kids and, yeah. and, and my family and stuff like that, and my, my good friends, but, you know, I can look at myself in the mirror, as I know that you can, yeah. and dude, you know that you put it all on the fucking table. I did. You know, there's no, was no else. Help. There was no internet. No. You know, there was no, nobody helped anybody. There was no powerlifting coaches. You had to learn shit on your own when I was coming up. Let me tell you motherfuckers in today's generation, the way we did it, you have no fucking idea no what fucking it's about. Idea. And that's why this generation is so fucked right now. Pussies. Because they are handed everything. They are given everything. And you know what? I had rich fucking friends and, you know, they had everything going for them. And when I grew up, those friends were the ones that were drug addicts yeah. and were losers and fucking... I had this friend named Paul Siebert and he was like my buddy. And I'm in the gym one night and there's a guy banging on the fucking window. And this was like a revelation. I was like, holy fuck, bro. You know, one of my lifters, I have team that night, and one of my lifters says, Mendy, coach, there's some guy banging on the door. And it was fucking Paul with a shopping cart. He was a bum. Really? And about six months ago, he fucking died on the street. Whoa. And his parents enabled him and gave him fucking everything. And I love the guy, man. He was a great, he really was a good fucking guy. But he just didn't know how to deal with responsibility, and and that's and that's a fear today of a lot of a lot of people that I see. Yeah. What's really weird too is growing up in high school. You know, if you had marijuana, that was 
That was the sin. You were fucked. It, yeah, it was like, yeah, but now, you know, this day and age, you know, I walk around and I see people that go to different high schools and I go, what's it like? Is there drugs in high school? And they, they got heroin. I mean, in high school. I know. Like, times have changed, crazy. man. It's not like it used to be. Yeah, you're right. It's it's scary out there. But uh, yeah. Heroin was not even in the fucking I didn't picture. even know what it was. No. Crack. I didn't know what that, you know, all that shit. I mean, I knew what it was, but yeah. it was like something yeah. I heard about people that yeah. was like, fuck, you know, heroin? Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, dude. So... You know, and I had friends that would train with me, and then in 93, 94, you know, one of my best friends, he, he was into, it wasn't called meth at the time, it was called crank. You know? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. These little folded up pieces of fucking paper, and he would do that, and, uh, you know, it, summer break, you know, uh, I wouldn't see him. I'd be the only guy in the gym, but there was one time in the gym, it was summertime, and I was training by myself, and I, there was nobody in the gym, and I put my leg up on the window. I still go into this gym where I started and look at that window because I looked out the window all the all my friends are probably down at the park and the river cruising and I'm in there wanting to be the best in the world yeah. and you know I, I wasn't going to falter I wasn't going to I didn't want to go that way and he would get off his dope he'd come back train with me for six months and I wouldn't see him you know I just sometimes I had to do it by myself there were nobody there to help me no I was doing self handoffs and you know I, I, I just I had a passion man and a fire I wanted to be the best in the world yeah. And like I said, when, when I opened up my first Powerlifting USA mag magazine in 1993, in the Inzer promotion in there with uh, Ken Lane and Anthony Clark, I when I looked at those guys, I, remember. I never crossed my mind that I'll need steroids to do this. I thought these the guys were legitimately strong, and they put in the work, you know, and I, I knew that they were the best, and those were the guys I wanted to be like. Yeah. And I knew That's Anthony good. Clark, you know, he benched reverse grip, and I thought that he had, was, he had shoulder issues. Yeah. But this guy named Ken Lane with a 751. You know, with these forearms. You yeah, know? he was a freak. Yeah, they got me training forearms, and then, uh, yeah, I, I just so inspiration I got from people along the way. You know, is is what made me the best. Totally. Yeah. Totally. That's fucking awesome, man. That's awesome. So let's talk about you know when you were taking care of your grandfather yeah. and and like you know the stress and stuff oh, that Jesus. you had gone through with that. Yeah. I know that you t you pretty much solely took care of him until he was gone. 23 right? hours a day, and the only hour I had was when I went, to, I had to bring him to the gym with me. Wow. I couldn't leave him home, because he, um, I don't know, he, he would take butcher knives and put them in his pants and go over to the neighbor's house and ask for food. He would go, he would go across <laughs> to the neighbor's house and give him a social security check, 585, come back with a sandwich and a Coke, and I go, how much, where, what do you, where's your money? Oh, I gave it to the mother. So I, it was you had to bring him everywhere. Yeah, and, and he tried to burn the house down almost at 2 in the morning, turn on some uh, oven burners, caught the paper towel rack on fire. On and on, dude, for two and a half years. I, I thought my life was, I, so I almost gave up. Yeah. I couldn't take it. No no help from the family. You know, I'd go to the Arnold, my mom would come up, or my uncle would come up for three days, and, the, and my uncle came up, and he stayed with him for two days and just left. And he couldn't take it. I do this shit every day, took care of him. And I'm looking at my grandfather, a guy who's uh, farmed and worked hard all his life, and now he's in his 80s, and, you know, in the system that we're in of checks and balances, you know, you work hard all your life, and then... You should be taken care of. Yeah, yeah, you, re you retire, but, you know, um, I looked at that, and I, I thought, time to enjoy life is now. Yeah. You know, when I'm 80, you know, I mean, probably won't have a, you know, have set, I don't know, you know, I don't know. If and, I'm you going, 80, and you were going through this... Right in the prime of your lifting career. Prime of my lifting career, yeah. This was 2005. Um, I'd done the 800 and 202, so 2005, I was still wearing the Ray Jax, doing 900 or whatever. You still love that Ray Jax. No, I don't know why. I fucking hated that hated shit. Hated it. Never could touch in it. You know, it would always hover. But you were wearing the denim and Rich Lack, you know, not first man in 900. Okay, he's not going to go any higher. I wake up one morning, fuck 1010. I call up in there. I'm like, I got to have that shirt. He sent it to me. I took it out of the box. I put it on. You know what, how rigid a Ray Jax yeah, is? Yeah. I put on that Phenom and the weight just, I was like, look, wait. Ooh, ooh. No, straight down. And I, there's no support. I threw it in the corner. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this ain't going to work. <laughs> and then finally I figured out how tight I needed to get it. And I spent hours and hours at night with Inzer um, mastering that shirt, making this down to the millimeter. Dude, I used to pop his fucking shirts every fucking yeah. day. Yeah. When we split up, he was like, you know what, Scott, fuck you. You know, you cost me $60,000 yeah. to get you equipment this year. You would jump a lot. <laughs> You'd be in there one day, Karen climb the next. Well, you got to understand, I'm here for the fucking number. Yeah. And you, you know, know what works. That's it, bro. I'm like, look, dude, I love you, John, but, you know, if you can't make me a fucking shirt, yeah, I'm going where I got to go. right. You know, I mean, in the end, it, nobody's going to be like, oh, he was loyal to Inzer and he fucked up his whole shit. <laughs> Fuck that. Right. I'm going with the right equipment. You know, and I saw you guys, uh, Rich Lack and yourself, trade the 1,000-pound bench, 1,000, 1,005, 1,010, 
And then I once I got that shirt mastered, and um, you know, like I really jumped out ahead. Yeah. And uh, I felt comfortable at 1075, and I took a shot at 1105 one time. It, it was close. But you know, then I was like thinking, maybe the time to make money is now. Like yeah. maybe the first man to eleven hundred. Can I make money? Yeah. Like, and I didn't know. I, I was my own agent. You know, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who was going to pay me. Right. You know, and I, I kind of just fumbled my feet for a while because I didn't feel threatened. I right. Behind me, Tiny wasn't there. Right. You got uh, Rich Lack had kind of tapped out, and you didn't seem like you were good. So I felt comfortable at ten seventy five, yeah. and I kind of stalled there. And I was like, well, maybe I'll do ten eighty at a meet. You know. Right. And just inch it up a little bit more, but uh, you no know, time was ticking, and. Um, yeah, then eventually had the falling out with Enzer, and then he changed his material. Didn't have that super stretchy band type yeah, material, and, yeah. and it didn't. I got in a car accident. That's what happened to me. I never. Yeah, yeah fucked my shoulder me. up. Took me like four years to rehab it. Right. So. But yeah, that's. Uh, I, I rambled, Scott. So just get me back. No, on no, no, no. Dude, taking that's your camera good. grandfather that's was good. hard. And I remember the day I came and went out to pay the electric bill. So I had control of his finances. I made him cash his social security check and give it to me. Um, I had to lock the, turn the locks uh, inside out and lock him in the house. And then I right. just took him to the gym all the time with me. And he had, he had to eat at McDonald's three times a day. He thought I was poisoning his food. He had dementia. Yeah, and yeah. he was a violent dementia. And he would hold butcher knives to my throat at 2 in the morning, threatening to kill me. You know, but I knew he wouldn't. And yeah. um, you know, then one day I came, I came home and he was laying in his bed. And his arms were straight in the air and his mouth was open and eyes were wide open like he would saw a ghost. I went in my room and sat down. I'm like, that don't look right. I went back in and, you know, can you lose your breath? Yeah. I'm looking at his stomach, it ain't moving. And, and um, I kind of went in, I yelled his name, he's non responsive, and I fucking freaked out. He died. And, uh, yeah, I called 911, and, and um, that was a tough day, dude. You know, I told that story in that sentencing video that my lawyer leaked on the internet for her own fucking benefit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, um, when the cops showed up and they were wheeling him out on the gurney, and that asshole cop who was smoking a cigarette, you know, because my grandfather wasn't supposed to drive. He would go out to his Bronc, Ford Bronco and start with a screwdriver and drive around town, drive people off the road. You know, and I, I sorry, but um, he said, uh, I remember at the gurney was coming out, and he was like, well, he won't be driving anymore. I mean, fuck, dude. The so, one to fucking kill him. Oh, I still do. You know, yeah. that, that left the mark. So, well, do people don't, don't understand. No, they don't. So yeah, no. that was, that was and when that happened, and then I didn't know what to do. For, for like a month, I, I'm used to waking up, taking care of him. I woke up and like, what do I do? Yeah, the house is all quiet. quiet all quiet. Yeah. Isn't that weird? It's like a little fucking thing. weird, dude. And yeah. then, yeah, I, I, it, and you I, still live there, huh? Yeah, still got the house. Yes, no, I don't live there. I live um, an hour south because that's where the uh, powerlifters train, and that's where my crew's at. But uh, that that little town didn't. Um, yeah, we, we had a good team. But you up still there. have the house, right? Yeah, still have the house yeah. in the lake. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that changed me, and um, I bounced out of it. And uh, two thousand, he died in June two thousand five, and. Um, I think I was dating Kara at the time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, 2006 rolled around, and and uh, what did I do then? Uh, really got into the phenom. Got a CPAP machine. Didn't realize what sleep apnea was. Dude, the same shit happened to me. <laughs> I tell that story all the time. No one believes this because people monitor your 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 lifts. Right. So uh, you know, 2007. That was a good year for me. Yeah. At the at your show, I hope I did 900. Right. At the Arnold, I did 900. And when I came when back, you had Kara smack you like my wife does. Bloody my and face. she missed it. With fucking a, whacked in the nose. She would wrap her wrist with a wrist wrap, so yeah. it wouldn't give. This guy hit me with a fucking two by four. <laughs> Loved it though. I remember that. I saw that. You had your fingernails painted black. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And you I went out and hit that shit. I want to be like and that. my wife looks at me and she goes, that bitch just copied me. <laughs> yeah, I did, you know, I did things for, you know, to get, uh, no, you get, to get people pissed. Yeah. yeah I, want, I want to be different. Dude, let me tell you something. When I started powerlifting, I would go to a meet and every guy would be there and they'd have their coach and shit. Yeah. So I had Marcel get in a mini skirt and fucking dress <laughs> up and come go. in. Dude, within six months, she yeah, yeah, she was right, fucking hot. Within six months, every motherfucker had their girl there. Really? Yeah, dude, it changed everything. And my wife looks at me and she goes, "You see, look at powerlifting now. Yeah, you all it. the girls had mini skirts. They were all looking hot." I was like, "Yeah, hey, girl." No one was painting their fingernails, wearing feather boas, and eyeliner. Yeah. But, but I, I, no, I, I dude, pulled every car. You I didn't do care. what you did. Had the hottest chick in powerlifting too. So. She was fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> Carol, we still love we you. We love you. Yeah. We're out there. <laughs> so let's talk about, oh, wait a minute. Holy Christ. Now, I don't know if you guys remember during my podcast, but we always serve food, and this is from The Mint. It's a restaurant in Sherman Oaks, and uh, it is truly amazing. And I thought, you know what? Me and Kennelly, we deserve a little Thank food. Thank you very much. These are my kids. This is my daughter, Sammy. This is my son, Troy. Are we supposed to eat food while we're on live? Hell yeah. 
That's what, oh, you little fuck. You know? We're supposed to talk in the microphone and do the whole nine yards here, Scott? Give me a water right there. Give me that. A what? Yeah. Thank you, baby. Thank you, my lovely Thank children. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> here, let me throw this away. This thing's empty. I'm not, I'm not here to get sunk as exposure. All right. Love you. So what do you think, bro? Oh, I, you gave me chills when they walked I'm in. I'm telling you, bro. Hey, who does that to me? Fucking A. It's, it's a drug within itself. Now, this is this orange chicken, and if you look, it's got little pieces of orange in it. Rick, don't some. worry, I got some for you too. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Oh, bro, come on. But you're just gonna hear us chew for a minute. Fuck it, we don't no. give a fuck. This is a real B, a UBU podcast. And you know what, Rick? Come here, take a bite of this. Hmm. Oh, I think I'll start spitting out food. I might. Yeah, it may be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck, that's so good. I'm hungry. Oh, my God, look at this. Making messes already. I took, well, don't worry about it, bro. I'm fighting this microphone over here. I'm not a left-handed eater, so if I do that, I'll be bumping into you. Go ahead. Look, I'll move over. Okay. There we go. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. I don't do nothing with my left hand. Yeah, I do. I don't even jerk off with my left hand. It's all no. right. No. no. It's I like do. I'm on a date. No. <laughs> I keep forgetting we're live. I'll <laughs> uh, nobody's watching this. No. Huh. Everybody hates us. They hates us, dude. No. We're old. We're, uh, what, the older. Somebody post, I made a post today. Mm -hmm. We're the golden era benchers, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we're, I don't know, past our prime. That's okay. All right. You're going to see past your prime when I smash everybody's shit in the car. That's right. Oh, fuck, that's good. I want to take a little break here and uh, congratulate uh, Kyle Rittenhouse for, uh, being acquitted of all charges today. Good. Let yeah. me tell you something. I think that that was a great thing that he did. He saved people. He saved residential areas. Looters trying to build fires and yeah. wreak havoc. Yeah, like he did good. Yeah, fuck him. And did you see that motherfucker trying to kill him with a skateboard? I saw it. I watched smile it. on his face. I watched trial. Dude, when he shot that motherfucker, I was like, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Smile at that bitch. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Fucking crazy. I'm sure there's rioting going on right now. Oh, dude, yeah, one of my one of my friends is a cop in New York. He's like, bro, I can't talk now. He wants to buy a shirt. I don't know if you guys know about the new shirts, the X Factor shirts that I got now. Um, I myself came up with a new technology that is fucking amazing. Canelli's going to be using it. I sent Tiny one. Um, it's fu it's it's revolutionized the shirt industry. And you're going to see that people's numbers are going to be going through the roof. You know, with all these other shirts, it locks up at the bottom and you're hovering and you can't touch. Well, mine stretches ease more easily. Is that even right, the way I said that? Stretches easier and touches easier. And the explosiveness is just ridiculous. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this. Oh, dude. Uh, it's going to be fucking great. I'm looking forward to seeing you in it because yeah. I know you're going to be on the platform at the highest level again. Yeah. Well, let, so, you know, let people know too. Kind of on the sidelines at the moment. You know, I had a C6 vertebrae impingement. It's pressing on a nerve, and it's basically paralyzing my right arm. And so, I get it I have to get a what's called a, a discectomy. And I never had surgery in my life, and I hope it's the last one. But uh, it's not going to cure it's itself. Not. <laughs> you know, uh, not going to cure itself on its own. So I have to uh, have to under the knife or whatever they got to do. And I just want to get it done and get back in the game because you know we can't do this forever. Right. Yeah. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm not saying I run out of time, but, you know, I'm, I'm impatient. I want it now. Yeah. Yeah. And me, I'm actually sidelined for a second. I don't know if you saw me hit that 1070 last week online. I saw it. I went 1105 after that, and I hit it no problem, but I, when I got the handoff, my original handoff guy didn't, didn't come. Right. So the 1070 was butter. He was great, my boy Pat. And they handed me the 1105, and it was like, you know, and I hit it, and everything was cool. I didn't feel shit. And then three, four days ago, I get out of the shower and I'm like tolling off and I'm like, what the fuck, my shoulder's purple. Black and blue. So anyway, I, I'm strong as fuck right now and I know I can hit 1150, 1200 right now, but what if it ruptures? You know, at this point, I need to be safe, I yeah. need to be sure. Like, you know, Tiny right now, he's super strong. He's rehabbed right. Mm -hmm. He looks fucking great. I think he's gonna smash the record. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. And Colby also is a fucking beast, so it's going to be a battle between both of them. Yeah. If I had to do a bet, I wouldn't even bet on it, because I don't know I who the fuck's stronger. I can't. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, you know can mean? happen. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I know you're going to be fucking great, but I'm coming for your asses in a second. Three months from now, we have the California State IPA 
uh, Mendelssohn Open, the, the California State Championships tomorrow, um, and I'm going to sideline that and actually have a good time because I'm not going to be puking before I lift. But I did want to break the world record, and uh, we're just going to have to wait on that. I'm right behind you. I know you are. No. I know you are. I don't so. think you're sitting safe. <clears throat> I, I feel that. <laughs> no, I'm working in the shadows, motherfucker. In the shadows. You know, with this microphone here? In the shadows. You gotta get singing voice. You have to think about coming out of my, my basement and I can put on some. That's only because my test levels are low right now, otherwise what? it would be out of my. Out of, Why are they low, Scott? Why? Because I just have low test levels. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can fix that for you. I know you can. Hey, let's talk about that. Yeah. All right, so you got arrested. Yeah, I did. Go into the whole thing. Let's let's hear about well, uh, how you can help me out there. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you have to rewind time. I mean, I'm just glad that I, I had a five-year or six-year natural ability to bench and found natural foundation I built. Right. So if, if steroids would have been around when I was 19, I'd been on them. Yeah, I'm telling you. So thank God they weren't. In my era, you there was no internet shit. You know, you, you had to wait for somebody to come from Mexico. So. Right. And it was spendy as shit. You right. got all the way up to Washington. So, you know, I first uh, kind of got involved with that. And I got a taste of it. Um, uh, when was that? My birthday, 1998. Had a body uh, bodybuilder buddy. He gave me a handful of uh, Thailand Dianabol, 5 milligram. And I put it on my hand. I remember, I remember exactly where I was in front of the circle.